on behalf of your host, Steve D, this is Bruce Buffer saying thank you for tuning in to Extreme Life. And now, this is the moment Extreme Life fans around the world have been waiting for. It's time! <laughs> in, a, in a kind of like a holding pattern, you know? <laughs> it's like some things are good, some things are not. Gyms are not open yet. Um, yeah, our, our gyms are open, thank God. I yeah. Think. I've been getting back to that. And that's great, man. You know, yeah, I wish mine, I wish ours were because we're just like going crazy here trying to uh, make sure, you know, uh, I guess, you know, gyms are a, a breeding ground apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, you can get on an airplane, you can do all this other stuff and I don't know, yeah. whatever. It, it Half this stuff doesn't even make sense to me, but it is what it is. And I guess we got to deal with it. I mean, you're down in Florida, right? And you guys are apparently, I mean, according to what we're hearing up here, it's, it's kind of crazy down there right now. So they make Jupiter sound like it's like pandemonia and it really isn't, you know, media always tries to go more than, you know, it has to be. And it, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's going to get you gonna get you and now you can't be afraid of your own shadow all the time to get you <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like creeping around out there trying <laughs> but no i mean yeah. they're make they they're yeah they're, they're making florida they're making florida sound like everybody down there's got it and it's just insane and and the hospitals are overrun with people and you know everybody's well, like definitely taking precautions you know definitely yeah. yeah like on the boat we even have like certain uh uh, stuff that we spray on the tanks before we're moving them. Um, you know, just we try to definitely sanitize things. You know, we try not to have a mask bucket, or if we have a bucket, you know, you don't dip your mask in it. You know. So how are people cleaning their masks now? Are they just kind of doing it themselves, or? Well, you know, we've always had that hose. So yeah. all we do now is we try to tell them either make sure you have your defog or whatever you like to use, because we do have a little bit of like baby shampoo kind of style, which yeah. that's how most dive boats across everywhere. Yeah, that was um, actually one of the things I was going to ask you. It's like, how has it changed? You know, I know you guys, you weren't diving for a while. I don't know how long. I mean, how long was it? Almost a month. We were yeah. exactly a month. And then we started, and then we haven't stopped since. So it's been nice. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys have been, been uh, back operational for a while now, and how has that changed the way you kind of, I mean, you had said, I mean, one thing is you don't have that big bucket of slop. <laughs> you know, you kind of throw, everybody throws their mask in there after a dive, and it's just, a, I mean, I don't, I, it's, I'm, my thought is it's probably pretty sanitary because there's a, there, you know, you're throwing a ton of shampoo in there. I mean, it's yeah. not just water, you know. <laughs> so. you know the, type, the type of mask that we use anyways, I, I try to use a special like solution anyways for the year yeah. um, so i i didn't even really use it to begin with it was just people that might have forgot it so to be honest with you you know most mass buckets even when you go on dive boats and everything most people are so scared to use them anyways you, and <laughs> one, no one uses it so then like it's in there perfectly clean but no one will use it so <laughs> all right well hey you know you got to take some precautions and, and uh, you know, like our snacks and everything, we had to change that up and everything. So instead of just being able to grab a handful of like beer, you know, chips, it's not like that anymore. We had to do individually wraps. Uh, we were spaced out, limited, where we couldn't be even a full boat. We're not a full boat by any means. We're not doing full capacity. But um, at first, we weren't even allowed to have uh, four or more, five or more. It was a real small process at first, and so it slowly let us get bigger and bigger so far. That's good. I mean, you know, and, and it's, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I just, I think the world, I mean, while this is a, a serious issue and, and people are, you know, there's stuff going on around it. And, you know, I do think on some level, you know, we got to get back to normal at some point. We got to get somewhere where people are 
you can't live your life afraid all the time. I mean, it's just, it, it's not healthy. It's not good. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for people in general. It's not good for mental health, well-being. Uh, we know that. So it's, it's uh, you know, I'm glad, I was glad to hear when you guys started open up trips again. I know um, some of the uh, boats that go out, like the, uh, the Dolphin Dream and, and boats like that, that go out on, you know, week-long trips, uh, they're not operating right now. Oh, man, no, no none of them are. Um, really, Bahamas is not shut down, but it's your quarantine in and out. Um, so uh, we're really fortunate to have really all the sharks here. So, And we got to come back in season right in time. So, yeah, you know, we, we missed a little bit. Like uh, we missed a little bit of bull action and the start of hammerheads. Uh, but even when we first got back, we had a couple sightings there right away. So that was nice. But, you know, we didn't even get the whole season like we usually do, like having hammerheads, you know, hand feeding. Yeah. Um, so we missed that completely. Uh, we, we, we don't have, we've been getting, we're at the end of our tiger season. So we still have them hit or miss, but we, it was nice when we first got back, we were rocking like nonstop with tigers everywhere. Yeah. I was checking out the pictures when you guys first, I was like, damn, cause I, <laughs> I was supposed to be down there like a month ago and I was like, son of a bitch. I can't go, you know, it's like, and you guys were rocking. It looked like, man, it, it's been nice. Um, uh, with the fish, like the shark fishing and everything. Um, I've been taking out a lot of hooks right now. Like it feels like every dive there's a shark with hooks in it, or I'm taking hooks out. Um, I even got one out of Jenny, which is our big 13 foot tiger, you know? Um, and, it was, a, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's just a little hook. But when it's on a 13-foot shark, you know, that little hook is pretty big. Let me, let me grab it. Like, this is this is it. Like, Yeah, that's a nice hook, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I have gorilla hands. So that just tells you, you know, how yeah. big my hands are. <laughs> okay. so you're a tall guy, too. You're like six foot what, right? <laughs> so, I'm six three, you know. So yeah. Just, you know, so. Little, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, let me size it up for you. There's my yeah, phone. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so that was in, that was in, uh, that was in a damn shark, you know? I mean, that was in Jenny, yeah. right? That's the one you pulled out of Jenny. Mm -hmm. it was right my jaw. And when I first grabbed it, I, cause I, I have a pair of like special underwater pliers that I try to use all the time, mm -hmm. but with the bigger ones, as they get bigger, you just can't grab them with pliers anymore because then you just yank it on something that's not going to move. Yeah. So, um, it actually took some practice for me to get, to take out these big hooks with big hooks. You have to move quicker, but you have to move slower. I know that doesn't make It's much. kind of the opposite, <laughs> but, but the way you grab onto them, but then the way you're like actually taking it out. I actually, I, what I did when I first started, I, I took a whole bunch of different hooks that I've got, uh, you know, that I've seen on docks or whatever. And I actually put it in like a piece of raw steak and I actually took it out that way. I kept like taking it out different ways to see how fast I could get it out without, you know, causing, causing little, damage. Cause you, you know, you don't want to hurt the shark, you know, I mean, cause you could, I mean, obviously, you know, when a shark gets hooks in it like that, that can, it can't be, I mean, we, we say it's like jewelry, right. But yeah. it, it, it's definitely not something that it could impede their eating. It can impede uh, their ability to function well, um, you know, there's a whole lot of things we know that it does some damage and, and it's yeah, like, I, like I've got other ones. Like, let me just check it, show you this one. Like this is heavy. Like this isn't just like everyone's like, Oh, the hook is just little. Yeah. But yeah. this thing is dragging their like face down. You'll see like their jaw dragging and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So definitely affects them. And we've all seen the sharks with the, with the mangled jaws and, the, you know, and, and some of that stuff might not be just from that, but it could be from, you know, like I said, other, other things, getting in brawls with other sharks. But, you know, obviously having something hanging, I, I tell anybody, try to have something hanging out of your face <laughs> and walk around like that for a while, see how that feels, right? And, you know, it's, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I could do that for a few minutes. But, you know, they had these in them for God knows how long before yeah. it rusts out. And when, when I start seeing them rust, I try to get them even, you know, I try to get them even faster because I'm very limited on the time because I'll, I'll get the hook, but I won't get the actual top part of the hook so this part 
will actually stay inside the shark just as shiny as this because it's not getting the 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 silver or the salt to break it down. So like if this breaks off, this still stays in and it's just a shiny. It's just a shiny piece that stays in there. Do you, how many, I mean, cause you, you and I have been diving together for, you know, a while, um, you know, for a few years now. Right. And, and, yeah. uh, you know, I come down there and, and hang out with you guys and, and it's an awesome trip. I just got to say, you know, Josh, you're, you're definitely one of my favorite people to dive with down that way. And, and I'll tell you, I've seen you pull uh, tons of hooks out of sharks. Um, how many do you think you've pulled? Out? Have you ever counted them? No. <laughs> ever gotten an idea? On just on um, this year. Um, so, you know, with Corona, it hasn't been a long year. I've pulled out, I want to say, close to 60. No, I'd say 55 to 60. Okay. Hooks. That, that's it's just like. And that's each time. Like sometimes you have like the triple hooks. I don't count that because there's three hooks in one. Yeah. But you know that. So I've I've taken out a lot of hooks, and I don't. You know, a lot of times like I'll be working them, and it they'll swim away, and I feel you know I'm like oh I feel so bad. I'm like man, if you could have just came back, I could have got yeah. you know worked it a little bit more because you know it's painful, and you could always tell when it's brand new because you'll even reach I'll reach reach my hands out like this. I'll actually see the shark kind of like, not whimper, but like they'll move away from it to shy away from it, the pain. Cause you know, obviously it's painful. Well, that's yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know, you can imagine it, it's, it can't, it can't feel good. That's for sure. And, right. and, you know, you get, you get into that and, and, you know, like I said, you're one of those guys that are out there, you're pulling this out and it's doing the sharks a service. Um, <clears throat> are there any particular sharks that this might be, uh, what's what's the most difficult shark to maybe get the hook out like you see a hook in a shark is it a tiger is it a bull is it a lemon shark i mean you know because you got um, you know i always feel bad because i know like when we have hammers come in it's virtually impossible for me to get any of the hammer hooks out um i i'm taking them out of bull sharks bull sharks are a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. um just because we're in such open water and you're moving around um and they yeah. could be a little feisty <laughs> and, you know it's just yeah. they're, so, they're 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 so big not lengthwise just like the head they're just so girthy so when like my like i said again my hands are pretty big like i'll grab a tiger and sometimes my hands are like stretched out like this or like yeah. a bull it's like this you know yeah, um, yeah like you know there's just as their size goes down you're grabbing on to like a smaller amount and they'll actually pause sometimes for you to take them out so it's it's kind of cool to yeah. see them kind of like move their fins to stop and kind of like pause for a second. Yeah. So it's almost like they know that you're trying to help them sometimes. Right. They almost, it almost feels that way. You, you know? know, it's, it's funny underwater. I'll take it out. And as they're swimming away, I'm like, tell a friend, tell a friend, <laughs> tell a friend what I'm doing. <laughs> tell them to come in. I want to see as many as I could. Do, do they ever like, uh, you know, mouth, thank you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> you know, um, that video that went viral on me that I took out of that, that hook out of the stomach. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That shark swam around me and even for like a week after would come and like bump into me and like head, like I got every time I would see it, it would come and headbutt me. And it, it was just kind of funny, the interaction. Yeah, it was giving you kind of like, hey, man, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fist bump, you know. Uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, that's awesome because, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's definitely, you know, people don't un often understand – uh, what the drive is to go jump in the water with sharks and do all this stuff. And one of the things I tell people all the time is, it's, you know, I, I know one of the reasons I like to do it and I like to post a lot of stuff on it is I want people to see that sharks aren't these, you know, mindless man-eating machines that are just running around in the ocean looking for people to eat, waiting for you to step in and, and so they could take a piece of you, right? If that was true, you would be dead a long time ago. Uh, yeah, right. and, and a lot of us would, right? We, we, you know, be dead a long time ago. So is there a particular, I mean, reason that, I mean, obviously you're a conservation guy. I've known you for a long time. You, you're, you're all about ocean conservation, um, but what drives you, man? What drives you to keep doing this, this line of work and doing this kind of thing? Um, a big thing, one, I get to interact with massive, beautiful creatures every day. You know, it doesn't matter all year round. I get a different feel of, you know, 
what what it is I do, and I just really, and really, uh, I enjoy it. I just I like to interact with them. I really, the thing that really drives is to turn around and see someone with their eyes just open wide, and like you get them on the boat, and they're like, "This was so amazing." Like I've had people that are like, I've had uh, three three kids, and nothing, you know. The, the day they were born when it wasn't as amazing as this. And it's just like so cool to see that, you know, that you took that Jaws factor out. You, you, they went in and they realized that, you know, that you're kind of hanging out with big puppies. So it was really cool to see like eye opening. It makes them want to come back. They tell a friend, they tell somebody, if we're more aware, that's, that's, that's learning, that's conservation. You've got to tell people, you've got to, and it can't be like, you have to do this. It has to be, look at this. You know, I could watch Nat Geo every day. Doesn't mean I know what it is to dive with a tiger shark, you know? Okay. Being, having a 13 foot tiger shark swim by you with an eye this big, just kind of checking you out. Like, hey, how you doing? Is amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely one of the things that I love the most about is I love getting in the water and you know, it, it always kind of brings you back to what's important, right? Just kind of like you're down there, there's no noise from outside. You're kind of just in the moment. Um, you're with these beautiful animals that, that people are, you know, they're so misunderstood. Um, and I think that's great, you know, bringing new divers down there who have never experienced shark diving before, which is kind of like one of the questions too, is like, how much experience do you think someone needs before they can go in the water and do some, do some shark diving? You know, there's different places around the world that there's different style of shark diving, you know, um, it, diving with us, you have to be more advanced because we're in open water. We are in a heavy current area and you know, it's awesome. You drift dive, you're sitting there and you're just kind of neutrally buoyant riding the current, which is amazing. But if you've never done it, it's something that you have to experience, you know? So we ask that you be a little more knowledgeable because there's not me holding your hand. I'm playing with sharks, you know? So you have to, you know, be able to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, there is other places in different countries that allow like open water divers to discover scubas that go down and they sit in a circle and they check out sharks. And that's just as cool too, because you, you're getting awareness. You're seeing that firsthand. Like mm -hmm. everyone talks bad about SeaWorld and, you know, I'm not a big supporter of keeping things captive, but if it wasn't for the shark tank, I wouldn't be where I am today because my parents used to take, you know, I'm a boy from Arizona. I, we used to go to California. There's no water out there, man. <laughs> There's no water there. So, so I went, you know, I went to California with my parents and like, I'd go to these, the, those parks and I wouldn't leave the shark exhibit. And I would just yeah, be yeah. sitting there staring at the teeth, the way they move, the gills. And I'm like, man, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to, I'm going to work. I'm going to work at one of these places so I could do that. And then I'm like, why don't I just go do it for real? Not a place, you know? So it was, it was really neat to kind of start the process of sharking. And that's where it all started for you, right? That, that love of the seeing them in the aquarium and then, and then develop that love of the animal itself. And then said, I want to go do that. Cause that's just cool, man. And, yeah. and you know, where did you first start? I mean, you, did you start down in Jupiter or did you start? So, you know, were you in another place doing that for a while? No, I, I got dive certified in actually Arizona. And then Once I, again, I, man, no freaking water, dude. I, I did, I did the lake. <laughs> and like we, we, we would be getting our gear ready by the side and, you know, in eight mil wetsuits because, and it'd be 118 on the surface, you know, we jump in the water and be freezing. It was horrible, you know, 50 degrees and, in the water. And then I started, I got my instructor in the keys and then I worked for cruise ships and then I went here, there. And then I started in St. Croix really kind of playing with lionfish kind of killing them because they were so invasive yeah. but then i would throw them up in open water and those caribbean reefs would start to come in and i was like man there's got to be something that i could see bigger i want to see i want to see them closer you know and then i started working in the bahamas at one of the places and i i've kind of done it for about i want to say close to 10 years all around so 
That's awesome. Uh, I've, I've played with some sharks. You have. You have. I mean, and you do it every – I mean, I've been doing it for probably about 10 years myself, but, you know, there's a difference. You do it every single day. I don't do it for a living, right? So, yeah, you're, right. you have way more shark time than I do. But, you know, it's, it's just uh, – it's one of those things that just you either, you know – I don't know if I've ever seen anybody jump in the water and say, I'll never want to do that again. That's the amazing thing about it, though. I mean, there's things I've seen – I do CrossFit as well. I've seen people come to a CrossFit gym and one of two things happens. Either you never, ever see them again <laughs> or they just drink the Kool-Aid, man, and they don't talk nothing about well, CrossFit. A after lot that. of times. driving is kind of the other way. Or it's just like you just – you get in and you just love it. It's just the way it is. <laughs> With shark diving, you know, people start overthinking everything, which they don't need to, and then they don't rely on their gear. And so they overthink things. Then they – get scared and that's the only time i've ever seen people go oh, i'm not getting back in the water it's yeah. never because of the sharks it's always because they doubt their skill level or whatever that's why we ask you you know make sure you have some idea of what you're doing not wear bright clothes don't wear anything don't worry fluorescent yellow or anything like that no, or... <laughs> don't yum, 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 yellow um, yum, no, yum, yellow. Like, you know no white you know that kind of thing um <laughs> And that's the only thing we ask. And, you know, as long as you're comfortable, we will get them right here, you yeah. know, but that's, that's your level. Yeah. Some people are, you know, farther away from me. Some people are so close that I'm ha like you, I have to like push you away from me. Like, <laughs> come on, let, let me move. Oh, come on. I don't crowd you, do I? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, and that's another thing. I, I always tell people that too, when we go out, because we go out to the Bahamas, we go with you guys, we go, you know, I always say to people, you know, you're going to get, a, the closer you get to that box, the more action you're going to get. Right. <laughs> you go further away from that box, you're not, so you get to decide how comfortable you are. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and how, how close you want to get, which is awesome. And, and I'll just kind of echo what you're saying too, because you know, I've done this all over the world and in all different places. And I'll tell you, Florida, the dives you guys do, because you're in that open water, I mean, you're hitting 90 feet from the get-go, uh, generally off the, you know, off certain areas there. And, you know, you're slowly bringing the sharks up and you're kind of all drifting. I mean, I remember we drifted like, I think a mile and a quarter or something on one diver. Sometimes, sometimes we'll drift up to three miles. Yeah. So yeah. So 45 yeah. minutes. <laughs> Yeah. You know, ripping current or, you know, sometimes we'll jump in and there's not much current at all. So you just, I can't be like, oh, there's not going to be current today. And then we get out there and it's ripping current. So as long as you are aware, it's not, you know, it's not hard. It's not, no. you know. But you do need to have a certain level of, cert, you know, you have to have ability to be buoyant, uh, you know, and maintain your buoyancy, uh, you know, and not fly all over the place. You have to, you know, one of the things, you know, uh, we've seen this before, you know, where, where divers will jump in and if they can't get down quick enough, we're gone. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, yeah, see you later. We'll see you uh, when, you know, you're going to have a nice long service interval, um, you know, but I mean. Again, you know, again, that comes back to the gear comfort. They're yeah. not comfortable with what they're doing. So then when they jump in, they're going, they're trying to blame it on sharks. And it's, it's just, you know. You yeah. have to be aware of everything you're doing. Yep. So what's the, I mean, so I, I, I really, you know, and I get this confused a lot too, uh, down, especially down that way is, you know, because there's there seasons that certain sharks are around, certain ones are not. Mm. What, how does that break down? Can you give, give, a, give us a little idea of how that breaks down in, in like, you know, from September to whatever? I mean, this is here, uh -huh. you know, that kind of thing. We'll get sharks all year round um, mm. from September usually from the end of August till the middle of October, because of the hurricane season, um, we get a lot of upwelling. We still get sharks, but we won't get as many as numbers um, because again, they'll try to, they'll either swim away from this migrate or whatever it is. Um, but then the rest of the year, it's pretty much we're going nonstop with either summer sharks, which are silkies, duskies, um, sandbars mm -hmm. then we have scout hammerheads and then from pretty much from i want to say december till june or july we'll start getting tigers um from december till march we'll get a lot of bull sharks i mean you want to have some bull sharks yeah 
you, you could go at that time. I mean, <laughs> people are like, oh, I, I'm scared of bull sharks. I'm like, don't worry. We'll change that real quick. Yeah. Uh, you'll have no choice because they're all <laughs> over you down there. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, so it just, you know, that's why I love Jupiter, Florida so much because I, I maybe go a month or two with, you know, bad sea, not even bad seas. It's just people are so scared of there might be a hurricane those first couple of months that we might not be booked up. You know, that's the main reason why we're not on the water. Are you guys pretty booked up right now? You guys are rolling right now? Oh, man, we are busy. Yeah? Busy. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the last two, uh, two weeks, not last week, but two weeks in a row we were doing uh, two-a-days. So one of one of the days I did uh, quite a few dives on one day. So it was it was something. It was cool. That's while well, you're making up for that time you were got you guys were off for a bit too. So know, right, that's that's good that you're doing that. And like I said, I know. Uh, you know, me and Babs came down there. Uh, I think the first time we were all down there, and and the, and the bulls were just all over us, man. It was it was phenomenal. It was great. You know, I mean, because you have that perception of bull sharks and. You know they are intimidating looking sharks, but you know what? You get when you get in there, man. You're like this is this is phenomenal, especially when you get close to the surface and they're all over. And like my favorite part of a dive with you guys is always the end of the dive, <laughs> like when you're getting towards the end of the dive, not not when you're coming up, but you know when you get to that point where you're at about I don't know 15, 20 feet. And you're just kind of, and all the sharks are just kind of going nuts, uh, you know, cause you got the great light from, you know, so, and I'm a photographer, so taking pictures is what I want to do. And the best light is like in that 30 to, you know, 30 to 15 foot range. And, you know, you're just getting phenomenal shots and these sharks are everywhere, man. And I, mm -hmm. I tell you, I can't talk enough about how great of a job you guys do um, down there at getting them in there and, and, um, you know, working with them and, and making, you know, and, and, you know, you'll get people the shots they want if they just, uh, you know, just got to tell you what they're looking for. If they're coming down with a camera. Just tell me, tell me what you want. And I'll put you where you need to be. Um, you know, some people don't even have cameras, but they want to feel like they are having a camera. You know what I mean? They want to have that mental picture. <laughs> yeah. And so they, I've had people right next to me sitting there, like what a photographer would would be they're like uh, i mean they're even moving their head like they're holding a the camera like they're looking at it like this angle that angle i'm like all right you do you yeah so you know everyone has their different things so it's kind of cool to see them yeah. yeah no it's awesome and like i said i we all like you know you know me baz and all those guys we like that one shoot you know ramon all of us when we come down there we like that bite shot we want to get that shot with the mouth wide open the only downside to that is the mouth comes down on your camera <laughs> usually but you know like don't don't worry you'll just have to buy a new lens no big deal no that's it, man <laughs> that's why that's why when tiger sharks come in i have to tell people i'm like you know i know you want that shot of where you know it's so close but remember put your camera down every once in a while guide the shark away because you don't want them sitting there because one they're looking at you and they're going hmm what, what are you doing? And if we just get a bite <laughs> shot, the teeth are already out. They're saying, hey, and, you know, there's. Yeah. You know, no, you're not. You, you guys do like them, though. I'll set, I'll set you up. I'm not I, afraid you know, to do it. You know, you know, we, you know what we do when we come down there. <laughs> Me and Baz are pushing each other in the sharks half the time we're in there. Uh, um, but, my, um, my shot, my shot. Yeah, we're, we're like trying to edge each other out and stuff. But, you know, so one question I had, what was the, what's the, I mean, can you give me an idea? What was the craziest moment you ever had underwater out there with, with the sharks? So, you know. Um, you know, one, one time uh, I was diving with a whole bunch of bull sharks and, I mean, they were everywhere. And all of a sudden they just disappeared. And I was like, huh, that's <laughs> weird. You what know, else is in the water? Right? That's not normal <laughs> at all. And all of a sudden it got kind of dark over me and I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe a boat is over me. They, you know, they weren't paying attention to the dive flag, you know, that kind of thing. So I turned around and there was a 30 foot whale shark sitting up like this, came down, swam in between all of us so much that we had to like push it off of us because it looked like we were hassing it. Wow. It was at it was at 90 feet. So it was swimming with us. We were in that current. Like we were trying to keep up with it and it was just like cruising, like nothing. And it realized like it got in the current and it swam away. It realized we weren't with it. It turned around, came back again, swam around again, and then left. That's so, you know, 
you just never know because we're so close to the Gulf Stream and it's the only place in the United States, you know, so Florida, right where we are, you, you know, right there, everything's taking a pit stop, you know, they're coming in, they're checking it out. So I've seen things that you're just like, I've had great whites swim under me, you know, and I'm just like, we were there on that one. Remember that <laughs> when we had the, the one, uh, I don't know where he, he was. He was real deep. I think probably, you know, probably about 150 feet down maybe. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, a bunch of people saw it, you know, I mean, it was down, but you know, they, you can see anything over there and you're right. It's the Gulf stream. So, and they pretty much have to swim that route to get to other places. Right. So that, they, you know, you well, get again, um, certain sharks do a migration pattern. So they'll jump on that to migrate to another place. So, you know, it's like taking the freeway, like, oh, all right, let me go to the rest of that real Shark quick. super highway, right? That's, yeah, that's right. awesome. That's awesome. I know you guys, and, 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 and uh, you know, I, I just want to kind of talk about this a little bit real quick is, you know, I know you guys are having some issues with a lot of fisheries down there right now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? With the It's not really fisheries. We just have a lot of well, they are commercial guys that are coming because you're allowed to go off of out of state waters, which is three miles out mm -hmm. and you could fish shark. Yeah. Now bulls, bulls and sandbars aren't protected. So right now, like you get a lot of people who try to post a lot of hating things on our page. Well, you know, we'll follow them back and you know, we'll be watching them or whatever. They'll watch us, whatever see posting and they're like oh well jupiter's on the radar we're going to tax the tax man which you know yeah. really and there was some line there was some long lines that were in state waters that some people grabbed and were cutting um they cut four tiger sharks off one hammerhead uh all these silkies with you know most of those sharks okay you cut it they'll, they'll live all right but with those hammerheads, they are not. Right? They, yeah. they, they cannot handle that. When the hammerheads get caught, they go full speed. They don't slow down. They just go full speed until they overexert themselves, and it will kill them. Yeah. So, you know, seeing that is so painful, to, you know, because you interact with them. You, you, you know, it's not like your friend, you know, it's – you're not talking. To, well, I might talk to him. You, but, you, you, know, you talk. Yeah, I, I do that. I, do that. <laughs> I think I've seen you but talk. I'm like, with, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm here. Oh, you're here. You know, so okay, whatever. I talk to him. But I mean. <laughs> Most normal people don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's sad, man, because, like I said, we all love them. And, and, you know, the, the sad thing is, is we can't live, we won't survive without them. They, they need to be in the ocean. They have harvested already 2,000 pounds of sharks in really? the last few weeks. He, over there, yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's just what we know of. That's not yeah. the next guy. That's not Joe Schmo of this group, Joe Schmo of that group. So, um, you know, we, we go to enjoy the ocean and they – they feel their enjoyment of the ocean is to rip out, and rip from and it. And yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I spear fish and I do fish occasionally, but there's a difference from, you know, mass fishing so much that you're just the devastating yeah. any kind of system that might be in, involved in it. So, uh, you know, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a big problem. I mean, we know sharks, you know, there's a lot of species that aren't here anymore. There's a lot of species that are near endangered. There's a lot of, you know, and, and if we keep, you know, messing around, we're going to end up in a spot where, you know, think about this, think about, you know, a hundred years from now when there's no sharks left, you know, I mean, for, for people, to, you know, if that happens, I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, but in order for that not to happen, we got to start doing something now and we got to be better um, stewards of our oceans and, and our planet for that matter. I've been, I've been just here five years and every season of hammers and tigers, I see less and less. Like when I first started here and even when I was working in the Bahamas, I would jump down and I would see four to five hammerheads. And I don't mean like little hammerheads. I mean, great hammerheads where yeah, they're coming yeah. in and it's like a train choo choo and by you. Yeah. And then I've had, you know, the same shark right there why there's three other hammer or tiger sharks swimming right here it was almost like tiger beach you know yeah, so yeah. Yeah. and we just allow them to 
kill them, you know, and doing all this land-based shark fishing, which it, they did, you know, FWC has put new ornaments, like new things that they have to do, which it helps out. But a lot of these guys are doing this at night. So who's really regulating them? You know, there, there are occasional people cruising by and they're checking them, but who's, who's really monitoring if they're taking a great hammerhead and taking that selfie picture, you know, yeah, for what? That, yeah. For, for a picture, for a profile picture. And it's, it's like, you know, and that's what I tell, you know, I tell people, I, I don't shoot anything. I don't, I don't generally fish for anything. I mean, if I, I mean, I, I would fish cause there's fish out there. Like I said, I, you know, cobia and things like that out there, you know, these are plenty, yeah, these are plentiful animals. They're, they're out there. There's a lot of them. And, you know, but sharks, like I said, they're one of those animals that, uh, it, it, you know, they're, they're going to go away. <laughs> I, you know, I, I spearfish. So yeah. when you spearfish, you see what you're going to shoot. You know, you're not just, reeling in and hopefully hmm, it might be dinner or it might be some rare species that we just decided to wipe out you know so it, there is a difference to it and you know there is everyone has argument one way or the other you know you're killing this you're killing that okay i i definitely understand it and but there's a difference from sharks to a fish a fish yeah that species might be able to leave you know ecosystem but without sharks we're not going to survive they're they're they clean our oceans for us yep they keep keep the ocean populations healthy i mean that's what people don't understand and sharks job in the ocean is to eat the sick and the injured because that's generally what they go after they go after mm -hmm. sick and injured animals they don't go after a lot of times the healthy ones because they only have a few bursts of energy a day. That's all they have. And, and they don't want to burn it up. And, and, you know, it's important that, uh, you know, we protect them the best way we can. And you're absolutely right about the hammerheads, man. I mean, I, I know I've been on a couple trips where there's been tagging going on and you only have a short period of time. Like even if you bring them up to, to where the boat is, uh, to tag a, a hammerhead or, or, you know, that type of animal, um, you know, you only have a few seconds to get the tag on. You got to let them go. Otherwise their mortality rate, that's that's why I went with like those tagging companies, which you know again that's an argument one way or the other. Yep. Do you believe in them? Do you not? Whatever. Um, with tagging them, like when they do bring in those hammerheads, they have the actual, let's say, scientist or doctor who's on the on the boat. They actually take over because a lot of times it's interns, it's people who want to experience that. They want to be part of the research. They want to see it. Yep. So when they do see hammerheads, they take over. So it's not, they try to make it because it's obviously a time restraint. So they're trying to make it go faster, but you know. Yeah, it's time, it's time dependent. I mean, you got to let it go. You know, you got about, I think the number that they gave me once was 14 seconds. You have about 14 seconds to get that tag on before you drive the mortality rate up. Uh, and, and the possibility that shark's going to die. And nobody wants that. That's not the purpose of tagging. The purpose of tagging is kind of figure out where they're going, get their behavior, understand them better so we can protect them better. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. But, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame that there's people out there doing a lot of things that are not so good for the, for the survival of those animals. But, you know, I mean, I don't want to end this on a, on a downer, you know, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's something I do feel has to be, has to be talked about, has to be discussed and people need to understand that these animals, uh, need to be protected. Um, cause they're beautiful. I mean, if you get in the water with them, you, you understand it. And that's, you know, I love, like you said, I love bringing out new divers who've never, I've brought out, remember Doug and Natalia, I brought them to tiger beach twice with me, uh, a few other people that, you know, you see their face, you know, they're all nervous as hell before the first dive. <laughs> And then after that first dive, they're like, what? you know, the biggest issue we have, especially at Tiger Beach is, you know, that when people are, um, they first jump in the first dive, everybody's like way off the buck, way off the bucket, right? Nobody wants to, everybody's like, oh, they're all nervous, right? The, w the week goes on and everybody gets closer and closer and closer. And by the time the end of the week, we're pushing people back because, you know, they're, they're so close to the bucket that it's, you know, you got to give the sharks a clear line to run through. You don't want to crowd the bucket, but. Yeah. Same thing with us too. You know, people who go with us more than one day, they, I always tell people, you know, even if you only going to die, if you can only die for a couple of days, make it two days. The reason is, is one day the current might be bad. The next day it might be hundred foot visibility with, you know, seven different species there. 
Yep. So you just never know. So you don't want to just judge it off of one time because, you know, it might be bad viz one day, but the very next day it might be perfect visibility. So, yeah. Uh, and I've experienced that. I've been down there where the water's been green and shitty. And then I've been down there, you know, the next day it turns around. Remember last time I think we were there, there was like two days where we had a runoff coming off the mountain there and it, it, you know, off the, off the Hills because you had a lot of rain, I guess, up until like right before we got there. Yeah. And, and then it cleared out, it cleared out in a couple of days. I mean, and then we were, we had like nice blue, good viz, you know, but yeah. it, it could change from day to day, hour to hour even. Yeah, you know, people are always like, oh, well, what's the visibility going to be like? I'm like, I don't know. It changes <laughs> within like two hours. Like, I've been on dives. 100 feet. That's your I, answer I, all the time. I just swam through bad visibility where half of my body was like in green water and half of it was in <laughs> blue water. And I, I'm looking at the people like, I told you, I don't know what the visibility is going to be like. Obviously, let's go to this side. But you know what I mean? Like, so it, it's just, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, hey, man. I'm not fine. It's awesome. And, and you know, you're awesome. You do, a, you know, like I said, I, I love what you do down there. And, and um, actually, I'm considering coming down there maybe the end of next month. Uh, oh, cool. Do some fun, uh, you know, get down there, do some diving. Uh, I know it's not like prime season, but you know what? I got to get, I got, I haven't gone anywhere yet this year, man. January diving. was my last dive. I'm like, this, I'm diving. diving is diving. <laughs> get out of here. We'll take care of you. Hey, I'm freaking dying, man. I haven't dove since January. So, um, and, and if anybody ever asks you what the visit is going to be like, Josh, just say 200 feet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Listen, man, I, th I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, uh, it is shark week. So I wanted to get you on the show, obviously right. you're the, you're the you, shark man. guy. Is there anything you want to put out there? What's your, you know, put your Instagram, your website, whatever you got out there. You know, make sure you guys, when you guys are booking with us, just jump online. It's always emeraldcharters.com. Um, just always go there and you could always follow me, Josh, the shark guy, um, on Instagram or Josh Eccles with diving, uh, on Facebook. Um, but yeah, any of those pages will, will be able to take care of you or, you know, you'll be able to see what kind of sharks we have in that time. So maybe you're seeing and you're, you're coming downtown and you want to see, and we have tigers, hammers, or whatever it is, bulls, you'll be able to see kind of what you're in tail for. Awesome, man. That's great. And I will, I will put this stuff in the, uh, you know, I'll put your tags in the, in the uh, bottom of the post as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on. I can't wait to see you guys again. I miss everybody down there. Yeah, and, get, out, uh, get out here. We'll go diving. Absolutely, brother. I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Be good. Hey, man. See you later. <laughs> All right.